Hell Let Loose finally has a roadmap for 2023 and it looks really impressive. There have been some major content releases that have been planned, including brand new factions, a new theater of war, and lots of new things coming to the game. In this video today, we're going to go over all of those major announcements with the roadmap in the background and talk about the major updates that are coming and also all of the minor stuff as well. The first major content drop is coming in June, with British forces being added to the game. This is an entire faction which will feature vehicles, weaponry, and all of the general bits you'd expect from Hell Let Loose, so call-ins, classes, and everything in between. So you'll be able to expect things like the Sten SMG, the Lee Enfield rifle, and possibly some light machine guns like the Bren to come into the game alongside British vehicles and everything else that you'd expect from the faction. And in June of 2023, the British faction will be dropping with a new player locomotion system in terms of mantling and maneuvering around the map, and also a map refresh of some of the existing maps in Hell Let Loose. So updates for older maps, new player movement, and the British faction is the first major release. Then in July, we have another new major release, which is the 101st Airborne DLC, with a new smaller scale objective game mode. Now, the interesting thing about the 101st Airborne DLC is that they are being added to the game, but it's labeled as a DLC and not just a force being added to the match, so I'm not entirely sure how this is being added to the game. The factions that are being added, like the British and some of the other ones, are normally free updates, but this is listed as a DLC, so I'm interested to see what the official wording will be on that. We don't have anything to hand as of this moment. But this will be launching with a new objective-based game mode based off of the Band of Brothers film, which is of course based roughly on real-life events, and this is a smaller scale game mode that lasts less time than the conventional hour or so of a regular Hell Let Loose match. There will also be the addition of an in-game store in July, which should unify the existing storefront that already exists. Now, for those of you who don't know, Hell Let Loose has lots of cosmetic DLC, which is all available for purchase on Steam, but you have to sort of go through various pages to try and get to it. So this is just a quality of life improvement, so to speak, where you can find all of this content in the game as opposed to having to scour through Steam to try and get to it. In September, there will be another map refresh alongside the introduction of a Windows 10 store version of Hell Let Loose and a Steam Deck verified version of Hell Let Loose for those of you who want to play the game on a handheld device. And then finally, at the end of the year in December, we actually have a brand new game mode in Skirmish. The Battle of Danzig is also coming and the Winter War is coming to the game with Finnish and Polish factions being added to the game. So December is going to be a really large content drop with a new skirmish mode, an entire winter warfare front between the Finnish and USSR, the Polish faction coming into the fray as well, and it's even a new tutorial system being added to the game. So overall, you have three brand new factions, the British, the Polish, and the Finnish, and you have kind of a split edition faction in the Airborne 101st. Two new game modes, one being an objective-based game mode and one being a skirmish-based game mode, and a new locomotion and mantling system coming to the game. There are other things coming to the game as well, and the ones I've listed so far are just the major releases, but there are some minor things that are also pretty good to have. The April update will be featuring general bug fixes, quality of life improvements, and new gameplay analytics for those of you who are interested in the stats of Hell Let Loose, the weapons you're using, so on and so forth. The same is also being applied in June with bug fixing, quality of life and analytics, but we also have free DLC in April and June as well, and we also have a non-verbal communication setup added to the game in April. This effectively means that whilst Hell Let Loose is best to play with a microphone, you do get some people who don't play with mics in game, which is a little bit unideal, but this should be some kind of system for them to communicate with a non-verbal communication system in the game so that they can still be useful assets as teammates. There will also be an updated in-game player reporting tool, which we don't know the full ins and outs of just yet, but will hopefully make life easier for server admins in terms of banning players. There is also a new clan system coming in December with a refresh and updated audio and soundtrack system coming to the game as well. So generally speaking, a good amount of content a fairly good amount of general quality of life improvements that we're seeing in the game, and also other random bits and pieces that some players will appreciate. 
the Windows 10 version, the Steam Deck version, a tutorial system, the fact that there is going to be two sets of tutorial systems, new gameplay analytics, new updated reporting tools. Generally speaking, this is a hell let loose improvement roadmap. And finally, after a huge hiatus, people are actually going to see consistent updates to Hell Let Loose, which is something we haven't really seen for a long time now. Hell Let Loose has been kind of stagnant because there's just been nothing to really talk about. I don't have any major concerns about this roadmap, and in fact, I think it generally is a pretty good outlook on what Hell Let Loose is going to look like for the rest of the year, and also a realistic one. I would have been more concerned if they promised lots of stuff that they couldn't deliver, but now this seems like a fairly focused vision. Now, they've even done nice things that I think make sense. For example, there is premium DLC cosmetic content still coming to the game, which some people have purchased and I've seen them in game before, but they are adding a decent library of free cosmetic DLC throughout the entire roadmap that we've seen here. And if Hell Let Loose is going to continue to be a force that continues to update, continues to make content, so on and so forth, then inevitably they're going to have to make some cosmetic revenue. I'm also a big fan of the fact that we are getting multiple factions, and a big fan of the fact that there are now two emphases on two separate new game modes. Now, Hell Let Loose as a game mode for Warfare Invasion has generally been pretty decent, but sometimes those modes are just too long, and they can get stagnant. So a new, shorter, objective-based game mode sounds really good, and we don't know much about the skirmish game mode, but it looks like they're going to be taking an approach of making the game have a little bit of variety in the modes that you can play, which is good. The current setup is definitely too stagnant and definitely too boring. My only major concern is around the wording of this 101st Airborne DLC. Now, from what they've said in the actual dev blog, it seems as though this is just an update and addition to the game, much like the British forces, the Polish and the Finnish, but for whatever reason they labeled it DLC. I think this might just be a communication fault because it seems as though this entire new game mode is going to be added to the game for free and I'd imagine that the faction would be free as part of that. But I do like the idea that they're thinking of a 30 to 40 minute condensed version of Hell Let Loose and one that focuses on an existing experience and something that's widely thought about and seen in World War II history. So rather than just having, you know, these random warfare maps in these iconic and historical accurate locations, you actually have an experience and you're going to be assaulting the same battery that was in the memoirs of Winters, which is incredible to see. And it's a huge hat tip to Brand of Brothers fans and kind of maintains the philosophy of Hell Let Loose of not being this arcadey shooter, being a World War II shooter, and one that can still produce unique experiences in a more condensed format. Overall, I gotta say, I'm pretty excited. Obviously, at the end of the day, everybody wants to see as much content as possible, but I think this is a realistic amount of content. I think this is the most that they can genuinely produce by the end of this year. And there is a lot of content, including the Winter War Front, which is going to be really good to see. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below, and I'll catch you again in the next video.